Yay Networks. All right, welcome to a brand new episode of the Finnish podcast abroad. Brand new episode, brand new episode and brand new location. Brand new wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to kind of work. For those of you that watch on YouTube, we're doing things a little differently today. We're going to find the right spot, the right time of day. Not right now we're sitting outside with the farm animals behind us. So you might hear a lot of noises. So then we may say, let's not sit outside anymore. But you look nice in this shawl cardigan. Yes, it was a chilly morning. It is. It's chilly here in the morning. We actually are a little rattled right now because... I just went to grab my cord out of the wall by the bed so I could plug in some of this camera equipment. We're using these wireless mics, and um, there's a giant scorpion. Oh, I was like, I don't want to tell Fran. No, I wanted to tell Fran. I wanted him to help me get it. It was a little bigger than I thought it was going to be when I saw my first scorpion. It, it was above average, for sure. It was also plain dead. I thought it was dead. It was plain possum. So... I don't know, and you might be able to tell us, you all scorpion experts out there, uh, but I think he was purposely playing possum. Tail went flat, he was limp, and then I went to pick him up. No, it was shaking, the lit tail was shaking. Well, not when I went to pick him up, and he just started crawling like regular healthy old scorpions. So I know, it makes you, you know, when you kill a bug, it's such arachnophobia kind of vibes that you, we're sitting outside right now, and we're a little rattled by all of that. So, uh, welcome to nature, birds, cacti, bees. Animals, flora, fauna, as they say, good and bad. Okay, so we have been here now for really just a couple of days. So you're getting us fresh with a lot of emotion, and it's taking a toll, to be quite honest. This is a hard adjustment. Yeah, so I think it feels good. Um, we got quite the drive, which was really amazing, and in reaching it was a very emotional drive just taking most of all your stuff to a different place um what a beautiful like all that area from new mexico to arizona is so beautiful and the baja is just a crazy amazing place so i stayed behind you know when we finished with the house stuff stayed in a hotel with remy and my mom and wheezy and uh just getting final, you know, errands done and that sort of thing, giving Fran a bit of a head start with, uh, he had a friend come up from Mexico and they drove our two cars down a 33 hour drive, which of course turns into like, you know, a 50 hour, a 50 hour drive because they had some other stuff come up. But you crossed the border at like Yuma, Arizona is what yeah. you went through, right? So I crossed the border at Yuma and then went to Mexicali. And uh, it was very interesting, all of it, like, Never seems to amuse me how we do things here in Mexico. But yeah, so we crossed in Yuma. Tell everyone your couple of highlights, or are they interesting moments? Well, we had a couple. Um, and if I forget one, please remind me. But The border crossing itself. The border crossing is so amazing, because we had these two cars packed to the rim. And I didn't know what to expect, even though Baja is an open border. There's still things that you need to take care of, like taxes. And what, what does open border mean? So open border means that you don't need a permit, a temporary import permit for your car. Mm. You can keep your car as long as you want, but I don't know exactly if it's a tax-free or something like that. I'm not all that sure. But when we cross the border... I was driving a Bronco and my friend Paco was driving the Cayenne and the Cayenne was like the Bronco was as packed as the Cayenne or more. But they didn't realize that they, we were together at that point. So they just threw numbers for the tax that we owe for the stuff that we brought. Like just like they opened the trunk is like you owe 700 and they see the, the, the Cayenne. And it's like, oh, this is a Cayenne, so it's going to be a thousand. 
So we pay the tax, which is like 700 pesos, like around $45 and maybe $60 for the other one. And we just keep going. You get like this tax document that shows that you already paid, which it makes you a little official for the other checkpoints the other stops, because you yeah. go through around five or six checkpoints throughout throughout the drive. And it actually does make you feel safer because you know that if you're going to cross with anything, weapons and anything, you're going to be checked five times. Yeah, so you may get through. It's like, was it? were you living your dream of that show that we watch all the time? Which one? The Smugglers. How, yeah. to, how to Catch a Smuggler. Not that you were smuggling anything, but it, it is true because you watch shows like that. And it's like how, I don't know, people are so ballsy how you think you would get through. And they're clever, but how you think you'd get through. It's not just a border crossing always. It's like multiple checkpoints along the way, too. So, yeah, it's just one after another one. And there's local police checkpoint, military checkpoint. So it's all sorts. I don't know exactly. I'm pretty sure they have something that they're looking for. But anyhow, so the highlight was when we got, we crossed the border, we get to San Felipe. Of course, we have this reservation for this beautiful resort. Beautiful. Like, we didn't, we didn't uh, rough it. We have to say that. We stayed in really nice hotels throughout. But this was like, it was about to be like the highlight, like San Felipe, it looked just so beautiful. We get to this hotel and it was so beautiful in 1970. <laughs> it was nothing like the pictures. Like they literally give you your key and a kind of uh, ride. Like Raid? In, in, just in case you see cockroaches and stuff. No, you just, no they don't get Oh my God. But we, uh, it was just crazy. Like the pool was empty. The restaurant was non-existent. The pool anymore. was empty as in, not just there were no one there, there was no water. There was no water. <laughs> and why would you need a pool if you have the ocean right in front? And y'all decided to venture to dinner? So we had this, and I'm not saying that we need to be very careful with being like flashy or anything because it's actually the Baja is known for being safe but you don't ever want to take your chances but we decided to venture out to have dinner and everything was great until the the sun went the sun went down, down. Fran described a moment of I don't, this movie reference, I realize not everyone has seen this movie um, from Dust Till Dawn, but I'm like such a Quentin Tarantino fan, but George Clooney, Salma Hayek, Quentin Tarantino, they're at the border. If you haven't seen the movie, I mean, it's a little cheesy. I don't know. I really like the movie, but yeah, that's kind of the gist, right? Like they go to a bar one night, it's dark, and then, you know, when the sun goes down, the whole bar, they, they turn into vampires. Everyone in that bar is vampires. And that was like, that was kind of, you were getting a different vibe, but. It's pretty much like people, when the sun went down, it's like, oh shit. Because we asked the, the, um, the military guy that crossed the scene because you go through a checkpoint for, with the military when you pay your taxes. And I was like, so how are things? Like, he's like, why did you cross through Yuma and not San Diego or get a little closer to... I was like, well, I heard that this was one of the easiest crossings and safest. What do you think? Oh, they're all the same. He, he's like, they're all the same. Uh, you just have to avoid driving at night and do not call attention to yourself. Like, don't be blasting music and stuff like that. As you're in two SUVs filled with myrrh. So, anyhow, that night we were like, oh man, we're like exactly doing what we, he said not to you do. You left the hotel, you went out at night, you're with the locals in your car filled so, with So, anyhow, so that was a, a, a very interesting night. We made it back to the hotel safe. We might have had to go check the cars like three times in the middle of the night. <laughs> but we had a couple of moments like that throughout the mm -hmm. trip. But the next day, when we woke up from San Felipe, San Felipe is two hours beach down from the border. We went from San Felipe to Loreto, which is 10 hours away from Not each Loreto. other. Not Loreto. Not Loreto, Texas. Loreto, right? Loreto. Loreto. That has been 
the most amazing drive ever I've for you ever had in my life. Wow. And I've driven a lot throughout a lot of places, like sceneries that you will see in Game of Thrones. Like coming out of a hill just to be open, like a hill that you go up and the only thing you see is so steep that the only thing you see is the sky. So you don't know if it's going to go down, if it's going to turn, if it's going to turn right. You just go and see the sky. So it's very nerve-wracking and exciting at the same time. Especially at 100 miles an hour. Especially. And then you turn out the, the turn, you see all the hills, all the mountains. And then you turn out that hill and the ocean hits you in the face. It's just like the wildest things. And you see these coves with these little islands, foggy because it was in the morning when we were passing these. So it looked like like something that pictures that you showed me from Iceland. Mm. Like stuff that it's crazy beautiful. We went to see the giants, which is the tallest cactus that they have around. Yeah, and val- it's a, they call it the Valley of Giants. The Valley of Giants. And it's just crazy like you look like a miniature compared to this uh, cactus and then you realize you pay 200 pesos to go to the valley of giants and you're going through valley of giants throughout you the end up whole seeing more cacti like that but like so the batches. valley of giants is kind of just this only region apparently this is just based off my googling uh, about it because i came across it and i asked friend to stop and send me a photo but, uh, yeah, these cacti are, you know, like 150 years old. They grow to 50 feet tall, which, you know, cacti get large, but that's just a particular area that they get incredibly tall. Very cool. Yeah, so it took them, like, hundreds of years to get that tall. But it's just so crazy how beautiful, how full of nature. Even though it's a desert, we pass through a forest. We pass through something that seems a jungly. Like, you see all these different climates in the desert, which is so, so cool. That's something I think is so important if you haven't traveled outside of the United States that has always been really eye-opening to me, especially when you, if you have traveled out of the U.S., and we just tend to go, as an American, right, we go to where the U.S. travelers go to, right? You go to the Cancun in Mexico, or you go to Europe, let's say, and you go to London, or you go to like Rome. I mean, I still haven't been to Rome. Um, But the point is, I think I've seen that some of these countries, they have so much incredible topography and geography, almost way more than we do in most parts of the United States, that uh, it just doesn't have as much attention on it. And so, you know, Mexico is definitely that way, because until I met you, I had never traveled a lot of, like, inland Mexico, Mm -hmm. right? Because you want to go to the beach when you go to Mexico, and so you go to these kind of, you know, very Americanized touristy places, and going even to, like, the Guanajuato or San Miguel, which I know is much more, you know, kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but... For those of you that have been to San Miguel, it's still amazing. And uh, But yeah, I mean, just the weather too, the climate in central Mexico. Even here, I've been surprised. We've heard that it's going to get really hot here. And Fran and I keep laughing and going, have you been in Texas in August? <laughs> because I don't know if like it gets hotter than that. Because I'm sure, I mean, we're way down. We are very far. And uh, I'm sure it gets very hot here. But still, the mornings and the evenings have been pretty chilly. Not as cold as it was when we were here back in March. But no. it's still been really nice. I mean, look at you. Are you getting hot in your shacket? I'm starting to get a little hot. Yeah. Because the day is starting to get warm. But It's warming up as we're doing the podcast. So, yeah, we may, we may change uh, scenes on you as we as we keep broadcasting, but uh, my trip down was less eventful than yours, but it's so strange being in a hotel, living out of suitcases when you don't have a home there anymore and you just want to get here, you know, but we made it. I just kept telling myself, you know, day by day, just kind of pass the time, get errands done. A lot of little things, you know, just you got to think like returning cable boxes and doing those things that when you move to a new place, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it next week. I have 21 days or, you know, you have 30 days to do it. No, I didn't. I had to get it done. Uh, Getting the mailbox, doing that sort of stuff. I did post a new YouTube vlog, um, just kind of a quick one, really all my emotions and crying about that whole moving out process. But uh, I was feeling okay, you know, being in the hotel, being with Remy and my mom and just kind of bopping around. But that that travel day, I think I, I don't I could never quite pinpoint where all of my stress was coming from, and maybe 
maybe it's obvious to everyone else on the outside. It was just the packing and the moving and, you know, you go do, 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 do. And then all of a sudden the stress starts to catch up to you because we flew down here. Everything was good. I mean, it was all pretty smooth and we got to the house and that night, you know, I'm putting Remy down and I got so ill. I just started vomiting like all night long. And I don't know. I thought I hadn't even eaten anything. Maybe I, you paid your Moctezuma tax before. That's what I thought. That's what I. That's what I thought. It was my Montezuma's like early. It yeah, was my initiation. like so. So you get like cleaned. It was like welcome to Mexico. But yeah, I had. Look even, how skinny me you are I had, now. I haven't even had a bite of food, and uh, so yeah, I've never thrown up from stress before. But I have to assume that's like just all the acid, all the stress. That's probably what it was, and. You told me to go to the pharmacy. So those are the little things that I'm still kind of figuring out right now. Um, you know, to be here for a few days, you know, without him in a, in a new house. Um, well, an old house, but you know what I mean? A house that I'm not familiar with at all. A lot of land, a lot of noises, dogs barking in the middle of the night, that sort of thing that kind of rattles you and you wake up and having Remy and, oh, you know, I um, it's not easy and I'm... And I had my mom here too, you know, so I was just thinking the whole time if I had been alone as a woman, you know, totally single trying to move. Uh, it's hard. Would I still do it? Yes. But uh, it would definitely be be pretty tough as I've met some women that have done that, that live down here. So, uh, well, great. We're going to take a quick break and hear from a couple of sponsors of the show. And then we're going to tell you how our first few days have gone since we have safely arrived down in Mexico. We'll see you in a minute. A shout out to Astapro for sponsoring this episode and providing us with free samples. My entire family suffers from pretty significant allergies, and I'll say Fran, especially recently, has just really been struggling. We were so excited to get these samples of Astapro to try. Uh, it's a first of its kind nasal allergy spray. Fastest 24 hour over the counter spray starts working in 30 minutes. You know, other allergy sprays take hours to work. And this is also a steroid-free allergy spray. So you're getting full prescription strength, indoor and outdoor allergy relief from nasal congestion, you know, the runny, itchy nose, sneezing. I mean, let's be real. It's just so miserable, especially when you're sleeping next to someone and all night long, Fran would be like, and now there's just, there's just so much more clarity and clearness. He says he's been feeling so much better since trying this. And uh, I don't know. I mean, we're just always looking for a solution. And AstroPro's just been such a nice solution for Fran's allergies. Get fast-acting nasal allergy symptom relief with AstroPro. Go to AstroProAllergy.com for a discount so you can AstroPro and go today. That's A-S-T-E-P-R-O Allergy.com. A-S-T-E-P-R-O Allergy.com. Ask the pro and go. Use is directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. Okay, we did a quick wardrobe change on that commercial break because... Oh, you got, you got warm? You got cold and I got warm? I'm not cold. I just realized I need to put on sunscreen because the weather is so nice that I'm, I'm, I'm still super pale. I got to ease in. I noticed Remy's already getting a bit of a yeah. tan. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I have been... We'll have so much more to update you on, I think, you know, week after week. I think only being here a few days, it's a lot. I actually feel good. I feel better than I thought I would. So that's promising, you know, because I think you move somewhere. Everything's new, right? You don't really know your way around. You don't know where to eat. You don't know what to do. Uh, nighttime, I would say, like dinner time, nighttime is definitely something that we'll have to prepare for because we still haven't done a big. Today's going to be like our Costco Walmart both are an hour, <laughs> um, and that's definitely due for us right now. But uh, so I have kind of a running list of things. But yeah, I've just been un unpacking the house, and yeah, I definitely recognize at night there is food delivery. However, he is on a motorcycle. The menus are amazing in the WhatsApp chat because it's just pictures of menus. I'm sure we you could have him go other places. Oh, one hundred percent. But the thing is that he has gotten so good at his business that he can have the luxury of closing at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. So this is... That's exactly when we start getting hungry. Yeah, and I don't mind it because they ended up having to go out and get food last night and I just went to bed. So if, as far as my health is concerned, it's great because there's going to be really little to no late night eating and ordering cookies here. Uh, now I'm going to get the stuff to try and make Fran's favorite insomnia cookies when I go to the grocery store today. I'm going to start practicing I'm trying to make those Yeah, for you so you can get some cookies. But... 
the town is beautiful. I think there's so much I still want to explore between the nature and cute restaurants, cute stores, that sort of thing. So that's really fun. But I'm trying to sort of prioritize. I get more comfortable when I get into a routine. Um, Not the same thing every day as moms and parents. We know you can't do the same thing every day. But we're looking at a school tomorrow for Remy. Um, There's a couple of great schools here. So, you know, same kind of formulas in the U.S. You know, you go look and you bring him or he can kind of have a day there. So we're going to go look at one tomorrow. And we're hopeful with the school year here, it goes until the end of July. They have summer camp in August. August, they are off completely the month of September. So August and September here, especially because of hurricane season, are like our June and July in the States. And so um, they go back around Halloween time, which is really interesting. And then they go until the end of July. So point of that is we could get him into school for a couple of months still here, which I think is really needed. I think it would be really good for him. I've heard from a lot of women that the single best way for not just Francisco or my, not just myself, but Fran and my mom is, you know, putting your child in school, kind of the same as back home. You'll meet a lot of people with kids your age that way and going to exercise classes where we're living is really in a cool way, very wellness focused, a lot of like yoga, meditation, things that I need to be better at. Um, I went to a workout class Yesterday, I had signed Fran and I up, and uh, I ended up going. And sadly, (laughs) I got there. I was the only one there. I was really hopeful to meet people. But the workout class, the spot was amazing. It was like in the middle of the jungle. I thought they featured you in their Instagram. Oh, gosh, I know. So it was a butt workout in the middle of the jungle. And I need a butt. So I have to put some work in to have a butt. And so I was like, perfect. Uh, One woman actually ended up coming to class. And uh, people are so nice. And I think it's because they know they've been through this, right? At some juncture, they're either excited that someone else, you know, is moving here and they want to share stuff Fresh blood. So she, I meet her. She's from LA, but has lived here on and off since she was 10. I guess her parents, it's so cool to think a long time ago, parents made decisions like this. When she, she has a three and a half year old, they moved down here full time when they had a baby. And so she already invited me on Monday to go to a horse, like an equine um, therapy therapy class with Remy that she started for toddlers. And I'm just so excited and I'm going to have to make effort. You know, I think I'm really motivated right now to make a lot of effort out of the gate to, um, go to workout classes and go to stuff that I get invited to for the kids. Like there's a market every Friday right here that I've been wanting to go to an organic market. And people say doing stuff like that, you're just going to meet people and the people are really friendly. So it's weird, isn't it? To make new friends and, you know, and also to, because, you know, you're going to have the same issue you have back home, right? You're probably going to meet a lot of people, some people you vibe with, some you don't. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm most excited about, you know, just kind of trusting instinctually women that have children that have lived down here for a while. Because knowing that, you know, if you've lived here on and off since you were 10 years old and you also spent a lot of time in Los Angeles, but you choose to be here, there's something special about this place and raising a kid here. So, um but, but a lot to navigate. WhatsApp is the, the golden compass. Oh, we all know that. Yeah. No, but not just for the communication, but um, I've been added to, I'm, I'm in like um, Baja Mujer, M- Mujeres, Mujeres, and I'm in Baja Mamis. Mujeres. Mujeres. Baja Mujeres and Baja Mummies, and it's um, and and then there's like an emergency line, so I keep reading all these updates. So everyone just that's almost like the equivalent, you know, of posting on Instagram or on a Facebook group of kind of events and if you have stuff going on. But it's amazing because the moms will be like, "Where does anyone know where I can get this this oatmeal for my baby?" And someone's like, "Oh, I have some," or they go, "Oh, Costco." So it is, it is, you know, you joked about showing up to a hotel room and it's like the 1950s, but it, it does in a way, my mom said that, it does in a way feel like we've gone back in time um, with the way things, but maybe that's not such a bad thing, you know? Maybe it's not such a bad thing. It's we've gone back in time with still it's a little grounding. digital. I yeah. think it's just grounding um, the way that you have to go. It's very methodical the way that you have to do things here, like from the way that you buy groceries to the way that you buy produce, which means that you're getting fresher stuff. You're getting you're getting a more engaging life, something that keeps you present, that keeps you in the moment. Mm-hmm. And we I have think clothes we... hanging on a line right now to dry, and 
it's not really in the sun. And then we also realize we're having kind of bad allergies. So as much as I romanticize line drying, um, maybe not my favorite thing. So the lavanderias are all around. Apparently you drop off your laundry and uh, which you I mean, need we, to put the line in, a in the sun right there. Yeah, we have maybe we just get in the habit, you know, that, but as parents, you know how much laundry and towel washing you do, especially with a child. I think if it was just us, you could get away just taking laundry once a week or doing, you know, doing your laundry on the weekend, um, but not with a child, uh, especially considering how few clothes. I'm so proud of myself. Like, I felt that we really packed those cars and brought a lot of stuff. But now that we've opened up most of those bins, we're all sharing one big closet, Fran and Remy and I, and it's fine. I think it's going to be fine. Well, we'll, right? we'll see. You My have, stuff hasn't been... You actually brought, you brought fancy loafers. Yeah. Tell me about the thought process behind bringing suede and velvet loafers. So the thought behind it is because I still have to travel for work, you know? Yeah, sure. And do you wear a lot of velvet loafers for work? Night events, for sure. If it's a black tie or something like that, mm -hmm. I, I will wear velvet loafers for mm -hmm. sure. No, I get it. I mean, I brought a pair of heels for sure and then left all that other stuff in storage. I totally understand the whole travel for work, but I notice what seems like you just kind of made this decision, like, ah, I'm just gonna bring it. Well, you know, there was not a lot of, I didn't put that much of a train of thought into it. Like, mm -hmm. it's like Not a lot of preparation. No, there was a lot of preparation, but it was more like, oh, I have this suit. This suit will look really good with these uh, shoes. I'm just gonna bring the whole package. How many suits did you bring? I brought four suits. Oh, okay. But you do wear suits a lot, even here. Like if you were to go... Yeah, know, if I go to a meeting in, in uh, here in Cabo, like we'll go... You would I'll dress wear a up. suit, yes. And two of the suits that I brought are uh, linen. Summer suits. Yeah, beach, beach suits. Beach suits, correct. Light beach suits. I can't wait to see yeah, your... Yeah. You, you need to do some get ready with me for a business meeting, you know, like that kind of thing. Not, not. I don't know if people will be interested in that, you know? I, I, we apologize if you hear Fran's speech with a side of chest hair because we're wearing these wireless mics and I'm, I want to apologize to our producer who's about to yeah, if video it's as chest, well. If you hear chest hair, it's certainly not Janice. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I've been taking that testosterone. Oh, yeah. My you... testosterone cream. Yeah. Well, but you only have a hairy arm. <laughs> yeah. And we, Miss Wheezy's here. You can hear her panting. I'm surprised you haven't heard the donkeys. Yeah, show her to everyone. She's alive, living her best life outside for now. It's not weakened with Bernie's. Hopefully she doesn't get into... I, I swear, I'm going to walk out one day and I'm going to see her having a face-off with a with a scorpion. This scorpion was... Well, I'm going to... We'll throw The a scorpion photo. eating half a Wheezy. I don't know, I'd like to think Weezy could go at it, but go over there in the shade, Mama. You know, when you're breathing and you're hot, you can go sit in the shade. She's limping and there's some blood in her urine, but I have a vet contact, a pediatrician contact. Remy has some weird bites on his arm. We're in nature, y'all. Things are, things are happening, things are progressing. But I want to say one thing that I think is super important to note, and it's also a pep talk to myself. You know, Fran and I were, you know, kind of arguing yesterday. I think we're both, you know, when you both get stressed and you both are dealing with a lot of emotion and Fran and I are just very different with the way we handle stress and emotion. And so we'll be okay. You know, we'll work through it. I think this has just been a really high stress time for all of us. And we all kind of compartmentalize and handle it in different ways. But I keep telling myself, Remy seems to be really, really happy. You know, Fran and his friend, actually, they gave me the day yesterday because I just was like, I need to work. I need to unpack some of this stuff in this house. I'll feel better. They took him to, you took him to. We went to Costco and then we went to a beach club. A beach club. So there are these beach clubs here because where we live, we can get to the beach down here. But a lot of these beaches, you know, they don't have restaurants. I mean, they are pure, like unrefined massive waves, professional surfers maybe, but no no one's out there. So they're beautiful and serene to go out there and walk around, but you don't swim in them. So there's one really good swimmable beach um, a few minutes from here driving, but there's a couple of beach clubs, right? So you pay, you know, $15 or something like that. Some are more than others, you know, and you can go. And there's 
it's almost like hotel services. You know, you have there's yeah. a spa for massages. There's, you know, drinks and food and a pool and beach and chairs, cabanas, that sort of thing. And uh, not a lot of people here right now because we're getting into low season. So we went the day prior. But, yeah, you got beach toys for Remy. And he seems to just be so happy. And I think what's so great is he's already been watching a little less, you know, Steve and Maggie and, you know, TV shows as normal. And uh, because let's be real. I mean, when you're back home and you have a lot of shit to do where you're going to do it. I mean, I think we're all guilty of it. And I think something for me is I'm, I'm never going to hate on educational TV shows because I well, I watched TV growing up and I was all right. But I think it's really critical that, you know, we try and at least offer him the outdoors if first to explore um, and just kind of use TV with grandma right now as we're recording the podcast and things like that um, in general. So uh, it's been really nice to see him. He's been sleeping good. Everyone always said, you know, when you go to the beach, like that kids sleep better, but wearing him out during the day. No, and he's, I think it's the first time that I see him sleep so good. Like he sleeps like no other. Naps hard, is sleeping good at night, seems really happy in general. Naps a lot. Like yesterday he napped twice. Well, two naps. That's amazing. And he uh, is eating, you know, all sorts of food. So, you know, I know a lot of you are going to be curious listening to this. We'll uh, we'll ask for some questions um, and please email. So on next week's podcast, we can start addressing that sort of stuff, especially stuff that Fran needs to start making content when he gets settled in here. Uh, kind of about moving here. People have so many legal questions for me that I think you're a better fit. To yeah, answer, please your send down. me your uh, questions. I have to say, if you have the slight want of drive through the Baja, it's just so beautiful. And yeah. it felt really safe throughout. Our experience in San Felipe was off with the hotel, but we enjoyed it regardless. But Loreto, we found a oasis. That hotel in Loreto was incredibly amazing. I'm kind of surprised some of these places I hadn't heard of more frequently until now. And I really believe that that has a lot to do with people just retiring and keeping it under the radar, right? Because once people kind of discover all of these other areas that have such close proximity to bigger tourist towns, these are going to get blown up for sure, um, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it could be a good thing for your business. Yeah. Hopefully. No, and not only that, getting to know the ins and outs of all these areas yeah. around the Baja. It's so interesting because there is so much potential, so much investment investment potential. So I was very excited to get to see the whole thing, the whole peninsula and see where the hotspots, the up and coming hotspots are. And I know a question everyone has been asking me is, it, you know, do you feel safe? And I like to be totally honest about that. And I, I don't know yet. Yes, of course I do. I wouldn't have, you know, moved here with family. Um, but, you know, to what level I think I need a little bit more time, you know, because in the middle of the night, for instance, when luckily we live on this kind of compound and there's two dogs that the owner, she's out of town right now, but she has someone staying here and they're outside. And they were going crazy at two o'clock in the morning last night. Um, and I woke Fran up because it scared me. You know, I heard really loud. I don't know what type of music that is. You remember when we were staying in that Airbnb and we heard those guys oh, like, yeah. real late at night, you know, playing real loud music. Um, and that's kind of rattling. Do you know what I mean? But then you think, so I was asking the house manager guy that lives across the property, you know, if it's safe. He goes, oh, yes, yes. So, um, you know, I, I feel safe. Um, I feel safe enough. Um, I definitely feel that my my Spanish is starting to, do you know? Flower? See. Si. Oh, Wow. No, I was I was speaking to him yesterday, and he speaks very he speaks about the amount of English that I speak Spanish. But I realized how much I understood him talking. He was telling me all about what the the animals eat, you know. And like I couldn't put that into sentence structure myself. But you know, he was telling me those pigs, those pigs sleep inside. Those pigs sleep better than the dogs. The pigs sleep inside. He was telling me how much smarter they are than the dogs. Those pigs are amazing. They eat. They are vegan pigs. Um, I learned all of this as him telling me in Spanish. He, they Every day they eat one banana. They love bananas. Special days, you know, they have certain things on special days. Fruits, veggies, grains, like, like pineapple. Christ like Pina. Christmas and, and Pina. birthdays? No, yeah, like once a week or some crackers. I was like, oh, let's not tell them that we accidentally let the pigs out the other day and we couldn't get them back inside, but we had some off-brand Ritz crackers. And, of course, it's like... <laughs> 
And I was like, oh, crackers. Are they allowed to have crackers? I'm like Googling as my mom's like, mm, uh, because, you know, but the, yeah, they don't eat, they don't eat meat, uh, which tracks, you know. Uh, I don't know. Lucky you, we see. But uh, yeah, there's some goats, horses. This woman has actually built all of this and rescued this. We'll probably have her on the podcast at some point because she's just uh, a really cool individual. And um, the animals are awesome. So hopefully I get a little more time with them. Uh, but they're right here. They're right behind us, literally. You can sometimes see the horses through here. So it is, it's super cool to see everyone keep saying, and I want to smell the air where you're at. It smells like, Animals. I mean, it smells like we live on a farm. But it Not smells right now. good. Like it smells like like a ranch. Just at certain times of day, yeah, because you still have this fresh air. You can hear the ocean really loud. It really is just such a. It almost feels, you know, it almost feels too good to be true. And that's what the guy Emiliano yesterday at the workout class was telling me. He he moved here from Mexico City. He's the trainer, and he was like, you know, when I first moved here, I thought this place is really great. He's like, I was just tired of living in a big city. And he goes, you know, the first month for me was really hard and kind of getting, you know, to work and try and starting stuff. And, uh, but he said, it's just been amazing that everyone's, you know, so nice and so helpful. And I got lost yesterday and drove down a street and I saw this, I was like, is this a Starbucks? Am I seeing things in the middle of the oh, desert? Oh, the Dos de It wasn't a Starbucks, but it looked like one. And you know the Starbucks, if you've ever been to a, one of those larger ones, it looks like it's in a silo. Like a huge, beautiful patio co-working space inside, you know, this big, like, kind of brewery. And I was like, wow, okay. And all these young professionals working on their computers. So I feel like every day I'm just kind of discovering something brand new, which is really exciting. Yeah, and I think it's going to happen for a while because there's so much that this place has to offer. And I'll say right now, my number one favorite thing after being here a little less than a week is how easy it is to just hop in the car. Yes, it's a dirt road. And so there's elements of that, you know, things are going to get dirty, things are going to get sandy. But it is so easy. I hopped in that car and drove down a dirt road for four minutes and was at a workout class. And, you know, the the traffic is just some animals crossing the road. And that's pretty cool. So that excites me quite a bit about just not having that kind of congestion. I feel that I need my kind of nervous system needs to come down. Um, and it's happening slowly but surely. So I'm sure over time I'll start to get more more relaxed because I felt pretty high strung recently. So I'm looking forward to that. But that it really is one of my like favorite things so far is just how easy, how inconvenient certain things are, like, you know, having to get food or if you don't have something, but at the same time, how convenient yeah. it is to just hop I'm in not, the car I, I think and go out to eat. this is going to become easier and second nature because we, we needed it. We're craving this slowness. So it's not that we're going to mm -hmm. be missing it. I need to find a place where I'm going to work. So mm -hmm. I still yet to find that. Oh, really? Yeah, but we'll figure out. Those, you can't go to that coffee shop? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, you'll find some places, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, I'm more like a beach club more than a coffee shop. Oh, you're more, oh yeah, of course you are. I'm going to work from the beach club. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, thrive. it is. It will take discipline kind of finding the right spot to sit and work. So we'll get into the swing of things. We want to hear all of your questions. We'll have so much more to tell you every week, I'm sure, as I'm looking around going, we have to get all of our stuff picked up off the floor. I have to shake out the blankets in the bed every night. I didn't realize scorpions can climb. Um, so that's really, you know, that's really exciting news for us um, that they can climb. Why, why, even, why even worry about the stuff you leave on the ground when they can climb walls and beds? So uh, I didn't even, I'm not that worried. I'm not that worried, but that was a shock to reach my hand down this morning and be like, Oh, he's a lot bigger than I thought he was going to be. <sighs> and he was the size of my finger. Mm, he was a little bigger than that. I have a photo and we'll throw it up. Yeah. But also, scorpions are just so, like, scary looking. Do you know what I mean? Did when you that hear tail crinkling when I killed it? When it, it does that and you crunched it and that it's tail like going crunch, up. Like a and those... shrimp. So tell me, the pinchers in the front, they, they sting with the tail, right? But the pinchers in the front can also probably hurt you, right? And that's how they climb. No, so the pinchers in the front can, like, pinch real. But, but you only need to worry about not the full tail, just the tip just of the, the tail. Just the tip of the tail. And it goes like this. So <sighs> I'm not even that. You all know this. I keep saying this. I'm not that scared of bugs. But, you know, when you, when you live in nature, there's ants around. And there's a lot that I need to kind of figure out and navigate. You know, with the way Candy makes her coffee in the morning, I'm going to relegate her to her own little kitchenette because she leaves sugar everywhere. And yeah. there's sugar ants everywhere. So, uh, yes, don't hate. Fran and I have already explored 
A woman came by yesterday offering her services. She she, cleaning she cooks so. and cleans her services. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she cooks and cleans and, you know, usually takes care of this when people have it Airbnb. So Fran and I are, you know, uh, yes, I think that's the one thing for sure. Right. And especially other moms know, like if you can have, you know, more affordable and really good, like do a better job than I can uh, yeah. cleaning throw in cooking even maybe, and then I'll learn to cook. I just want to learn how to make tortillas and some things like that. Uh, but yeah, there's some adventure ahead. So thanks for tuning in and we'll uh, take all of your questions. I know Fran said message him, but I can keep track of them and relay them to him. If you email uh, info at fetish.com or DM us and I'll screenshot some of those and then we'll get to them on next week's show. But thanks for your loyalty. Thanks for your support. Thanks for listening. Uh, as well as today kicks off the Fetish Memorial Day sale. Uh, 25% off site wide. It's one of the largest sales we do of the year. Yes, Fetish is still running. I've gotten that question a lot, which is a little concerning. <laughs> Please support, go by. We'll have new stuff coming out later this summer that I'm excited about. Uh, but yeah, I'll be working from here. I'll be back um, in town in a month for an event we have in Dallas. But uh, yeah, huge sale. So go get all of your favorites and we'll, uh, we'll catch you all next week. Bye.